When the March on Washington took place, I had just graduated from high school and watched on TV at my home in Henretta, North Carolina. My job that summer was to make my clothes for college. My mother had a pedal singer sewing machine. At that time, my college had a policy of skirts only during the week. So that summer, I was busy sewing. I moved the sewing machine into the living room so I could watch the march. I felt so proud. I remember seeing the buses arriving and the people walking to the Lincoln Memorial. What I remember most is that mass of people stretching far beyond the reflecting pool, young, old, black, and white. I went on to college and forgot about that day. I graduated and came to Washington, D.C. I was hired in the Black Studies Division at the Martin Luther King Library. Later, I worked at Howard University's Moreland Spingarn Research Center. That's where my love of African American history really blossomed into writing books and articles. I met Dr. Joyce Ladner at Howard. In 1963, while I watched from North Carolina, Joyce and her sister Dory were representing SNCC as student organizers of the march. They went to New York to work with Bayard Rustin. Often Joyce could not claim her bed until Bob Dylan finished trying out new songs for the march. Dory worked as a fundraiser. Joyce worked in the Harlem office. She traveled to New Jersey, Long Island, and Manhattan, raising money to charter buses to the march. Joyce's mother saw her interviewed by CBS correspondent Nancy Dickerson. She felt that if her mother could see the support for the march from Palmer's Crossing, Georgia, surely she would feel the commitment that Joyce and Dory had fighting for justice was well worth the price. Joyce lived to see the day when her mother was more proud than frightened for them. At the time of the 1963 march, little did I know that my life would revolve around African American history. I often see the photographs of the march, listen to the speeches and songs, and remember my sitting at that pedal machine, diligently watching and sewing. So today I've come full circle to being an activist, sharing history with the public, through my work as a librarian or historian, and now as a digital storyteller. I am happy to join with you today in what will go down in history as the greatest demonstration for freedom in the history of our nation. <laughs>